Amen. But before the word comes, amen, our young ladies are going to bless us in the dance. Amen. And we are so grateful and thankful um, for these young ladies. Let's clap our hands and give God praise. After they have danced, amen, I want everyone to rest to your feet um, so that we can hear the word on today. That is one of our main focuses, amen. amen. But we want to hear the word from one of the greatest pastors I know, yeah. Pastor Darius Harris. Yeah. He's humble. That's one of the first things I like to say. He's not a showboat. Amen. amen. God blesses him. He knows how to give glory back to God. Amen. And he loves God. He loves his people. Um, he's a faithful man. And all of that matters beyond the pulpit. Amen. Amen. But we, he has a word today that we're going to enjoy, hear, eat of the word. It won't fall on deaf ears. Um, but I'm so thankful these young ladies have been working so hard and so diligently every week. Let's clap and praise God for the freedom, kingdom freedom youth dancers. Praise God. After that, let's stand and hear the word.
believe. Come on, begin to put your hands together for him. Amen. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. And for our young ladies dancing, come on, give God a praise for him. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for him one more time. What a marvelous job. Come on, what a magnificent job. Hallelujah. All over the place I dare just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to lift him up right now. Come on, just begin to give God praise right now. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, hallelujah. Give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips right now. Hallelujah. Come on, thank him for his goodness, his mercies, and his grace. Come on, just begin to bless his name. Come on, just shout hallelujah. Come on, just thank him. Come on, not your hands, but lift your voice. Come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, don't clap. Lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Come on, come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. God, we thank you. But we thank you, God. You gave us the best gift. That's your son. But we thank you, God. You gave us the best gift that any man can give us. Hallelujah. That any person can give us. Hallelujah. But we thank you, God, for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Come on, just begin to bless his name and lift up your voice. Come on, don't quiet down. We're not going to be here alone. Don't quiet down. Come on, don't quiet down. Just begin to lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. He's a miracle working God. He's a way making God. He's a God that can change your situation in an instant. It don't take God long. God, it, don't, it don't take God long. Come on, just begin to bless his name. Hallelujah. Just give him your heart. Give him your mouth. Come on. He's already done it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, we bless your name. God, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can hold the music for a second. Hold the music for a second. Hold it. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your voice. Come on, just begin to give God glory. Come on, begin to give God glory. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Come on, just begin to extend your hand and give God glory. Come on, he's the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, this is very special what I have going on, not just today, but God say, I have a unique anointing over this ministry. And I hear God saying, this is a special church in my heart. This is a special church in my eyes. Hallelujah. This is a very special place, the Lord say. The Lord say, continue to embrace me. Hallelujah. And you shall continue to see miraculous healings in your life. I hear God say, continue to embrace this special anointing. Hallelujah. The Lord say, it shall not lift, but as you give me glory, it shall become stronger. You, hallelujah. It shall intensify. Hallelujah. It shall intensify, and your life shall continue to be changed. Huh? The Lord say, it's something very special that I see with you. It's something special I see with your praise. Huh? Come on, just begin to open up your mouth and give God praise all over the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. He's a miracle working God. Oh, yes, he is. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's thank God for Pastor Latoya Harris. Give her a great round of applause. Come on. Thank God what he's doing in her life. Next year, amen, doors are already opening up to minister, so let's continue to pray for her strength, amen, as God continue to give her not just doors, but, but assignments where people can be, amen, delivered and set free. Someone shout amen. Let's thank God for our chief apostle, Dr. Todd M. Hall. Come on, let's give him a great round of applause. Hallelujah. I thank God for our leader. Hallelujah. Good leadership is a blessing. Bad leadership. Amen. It's a curse. I just thank God for every guest being in the house. Come on, give yourself a round of applause. We thank God that you're here to worship with us today. Let's give it up for Jesus Christ one more time. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated in the presence of God. And we've been on a wonderful series that, that I've been enjoying, and I want to continue to make a disclaimer that we really don't have any control of the church. It's all about God. Can I get somebody to shout amen? It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. On Wednesday, we had a marvelous experience. Someone shout amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to try to get you guys at a good time. We had a marvelous experience. Holy Ghost, amen, had its way. Pastor Toya Ballard can make it out the building. Amen. And, and, and while we was driving home, I was hoping she'd get out the spirit because I was hungry. So I, I done the test. If you're really in the Holy Ghost, I ain't saying you weren't really in the Holy Ghost, but you ain't going to be thinking about no food. So we were driving past Waterburger and she was seeing the spirit. I was, I was slowing down, man. I was, I was like, God, speak to her. Come on, God. I'm hungry now. Still in the spirit. Come on. All right. I, I, Minister Man, was you still in the spirit when you left? Did you, did you stop by and get you something to eat? Okay, well, he was really gone then. <laughs> Straight to that. So I was like, God, come on, God. I'm hungry. And I hope she get out the spirit. But I slowed way down. She didn't even notice. Because oftentimes she says she want to, you know, you know, just seek the Lord and, and continue, amen, to stay in that glory and don't want to eat after Wednesday night. So I was slowing down. I slowed down about 20, 20 miles per hour. She still ain't saying nothing. Ah, I said, God, Lord Almighty, amen. So by the time we get home, she started talking real clear, wasn't no tongue, I'm hungry. Wait a minute, I thought you was in the Holy Ghost. I didn't say that. I said, I'm going to get her. Like, we just passed all the restaurant, but I'll go back. Amen. I was like, well, thank you, God. Some of y'all give God praise. It wasn't no e mama. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't no roboco. It wasn't no, I'm hungry. It just something. That she said that, she went back in the Holy Ghost. She said, thank you, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> One thing that can draw you out the Holy Ghost is food. God can't get nobody to talk. Some of y'all are hungry right now. That's why you can't give God no praise. Hey, 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 hey amen. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. Amen. But I'm glad God, I'm like, God, come on now. I'm hungry now. And we, we tried to wait, you know, because we like to get that little taquito, but, but it don't start till like 11, 8 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Amen. I'm like, well, heck, by that time, it's 10, 30. We got 30 more minutes. She's like, well, you could have been and made somebody in. So she was really out the Holy Ghost. Man, I, I got in there. I put that flour on that pan. Come on, put that butt on there. I made that bacon, that egg, and cheese taquito better than Whataburger. Yeah. Y'all yeah, ain't going to help me talking here. She's like, this is better than Whataburger. I'm like, I know it is. Had me some sauce on the side. Amen. Hallelujah. They hit the spot. Glory be to God. How many of y'all thank God for what he's doing? Someone shout the joy of the Lord. Say, it is my strength. I will ask you to turn to the book of Psalms 16 and 11. Of Psalms 16 and 11. We're going right into the word. I've really been enjoying these series, I mean, because we've been noticing. Thank you, Minister Norma. Awesome testimony about the characteristics of God. Amen. As we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we're talking about the character of God. And oftentimes, we want to have more of godly character, but... It's something that we cannot do within our own self. It's going to take us, amen, allowing God to do it. Someone shout amen. Amen. But Psalm 16 and 11, I'm going to read briefly. Hallelujah. If you're there, can I get you to shout amen? Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. So, so, so the Bible is saying here, Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. You get joy by being in the presence of God. Our hell can break loose in your life, but something when I tap in God's presence, it's almost like a hiding place. It's, it's like uh, yeah, when I come out of his presence, I still might feel bad about whatever I'm going through, but when I'm in his presence, I don't feel that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to speak out against depression because depression comes and it goes. It, it lifts, hallelujah. But when you're in God's presence, it's hard for you to stay depressed. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you're in God's presence, you can hear some of the worst news of your life. Uh, glory be to God. But when you're in God's presence, you will still have overwhelming joy. I'm talking about someone shout unspeakable joy. The kind of joy I'm talking about, it's only one way to get it, and that's in the presence of God. We talked about this scripture a few weeks tonight, but, but before, in the A clause, it's saying, I will show the path of life. Amen. So in order to understand the path of life uh, that God has for you, glory be to God, you have to tap into God's presence. 
And a lot of us are guessing about our assignment, what we're supposed to do in life, because we haven't tapped in God's presence. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy. And some of us are on E because we haven't invoked the presence of God in our life. You empty. You got the money, but you still empty. You married, but you still empty. Hallelujah. You got the promotion, but you still empty. Yeah. Amen. You finally got the car, but you still empty. You finally got the woman, but you still empty. Yeah. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. You finally got the house, but you still empty. You finally got the promotion, but you still empty. Because peace and joy is not in stuff, but it's in the presence of God. Bible say Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Glory be to God. So when I get in God's presence, he begin to give me presents. When I get in the presence of God and when I seek ye first the kingdom, all these other things shall be added unto you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you treat God right, he's going to make sure you get what you need and also what you want. Yeah, I was a decent child. I'm not trying to brag on myself, but my parent, did, my mom didn't mind giving me what I want because I knew how to obey. She tell me no, I know what no meant. I didn't do it no more. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah, so, so, so when I look up on the Christmas tree around that time, she gave me what I want because my grades was all right. I was respectful. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Come on. I didn't act a fool all the time. Maybe a little bit because we all was a little naughty sometimes. And some of y'all want stuff from God, but you've been way too naughty. Yeah. We want stuff from God, but we naughty. But, but we want God to overlook our naughtiness, but we want that favor. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We want that increase. We want that promotion. But you didn't live any kind of way, and you expect God just to give it to you when you don't really qualify for what you're asking God for. Do you really qualify what you're asking God for? Truth be told, none of us really qualify. Hallelujah. One of our best Christmas we had, and we're moving on. We don't have a lot of scriptures where was when, amen, my mom, she was a single mom at the time, and, 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 and they had them little pogo balls. I don't know what them little balls that they was little round, and they had like a little, a little circle, looked like it was Saturn, and you pop around it all day. Y'all remember that back in the day? Yeah, yeah, see, I, I can't get no help, nobody. I, I'm talking about G.I. Joe's. I, I was a remote control car kind of dude, amen. I, I, want, I want a remote control car every Christmas, but, but nowadays I'm praying for you parents because they want helicopters. Drones and airplanes and PS4s that cost five and six hundred dollars. You better not give your kids no socks. They gonna look at you like you done lost your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Socks, mama, what were you thinking? Ma? I know you ain't gonna disrespect me like that. Socks. They look at they open their it's and you and parents crazy. You got the nerve to have a big old box. And they thinking they got their PS4 and they got some socks in there. Yeah. Hey, man, they looking open at me. Oh, thank you, mama. They ain't never saw them socks in nowhere. Matter of fact, what do socks go when you need them the most? Have anybody, can anybody help answer this question? When I need socks the most, they separate. Yeah. Look, some of y'all like that with God. You separate from God when God needs you the most. He needs your prayers. He needs your worship. He's trying to wake you up, and, but you separate. You like a pair of socks. You can know where to be found. I don't know how that can get out of that, but anyway. I need socks the most. Can't find a matching pair. Hey, Amen. It'll come up two months later. I can't get no. <laughs> then threw some away. I didn't gave. I keep a little sock pile just in case I find it. If anybody do that besides me, Pastor, come on now. We. I got a little sock pile in case it come up. And we got crazy little dog. She likes socks. I mean, like, why you like socks? As soon as we turn our head, she's in stove, pass her toy, your shoe. She messed up my flip-flop. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, we can't keep nothing. She was good for about three weeks. Then all of a sudden, her true identity started to change. 
You don't know people when you first meet them. You, you got to give them time because they are change on you. I thought we had the nicest, sweetest dog of all time. No barking, no gruffing, no growling, nothing. But about three weeks, a whole nother side came. Yo, I, I, come on. Some of y'all think y'all know people you connected with, but you got to give them time. Yo, woo, it takes crazy time. It, 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 it takes time to really get to know somebody. It, it takes time to really get to know the woman. Catch her on a bad hair day. Then you can tell if you really know her. Y'all do know women are cause because women will drive you crazy. Yeah. Oh, some of y'all didn't like that. I'm playing with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> women cause, they'll drive you crazy. Yeah. Y'all didn't like what life. Y'all look at me, pastor. Don't go that way. Straighten it. Not today. Not blink an eye, nothing. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. You got to laugh to last. Come on, got no joy. Why come y'all playing these songs? What would the lonely do at Christmas? If you're lonely, that's not the song you need to be playing. You crying because it's Christmas time and you don't got nobody. Because you don't got no biceps in your bed. Y'all. Yeah. Because you don't got nobody that said they want to say I do to you yet. Yeah. You ought to give God praise. God trying to spare some of y'all women and you don't know what you're praying for. The woman of God preached on patience the last two weeks. Uh, you got to wait till God send you the right man. And you keep entertaining peasants uh, when God got a king for you. That king ain't going to come because why? You sitting at McDonald's with that peasant. And there ain't nothing wrong with Mickey D's. I mean, I go every once in a while. But I'm just saying, you know, because you can't eat no filet mignon, amen, all the time. Y'all ain't going to help me. Once in a while, you need a Taco Bell meal, yeah. I don't know why women like Taco Bell. What is it with Taco Bell, yeah? Oh, come on, they're 20 and under, y'all love Taco Bell. Don't, them young girl love Taco Bell. Y'all rolling up. I'm sorry, y'all rolling up. Y'all got in elevated child. Y'all don't like no Taco Bell. We didn't graduate to Posadas now. Yeah. On the border now. Don Juan, come on. All right, all right, y'all. We we on y'all done upgraded now. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all on another level. Hallelujah. Y'all tripping because y'all don't got nobody. Y'all don't thank God. Amen. Amen. You really want to know a man crazy. Start talking to him while that football game on. That's blasphemy. Ask me to do it after the game. My cowboys need my full attention right now. The focus that I do some kind of way is going to help allow them to get victory. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. I'm sorry I don't got nothing too deep for y'all, but, but I'm more focused on joy. Some of y'all need more joy in your life. You don't smile. I heard one lady say I used to work with years ago. She said, you know, my husband, he don't smile. He don't laugh. He don't do none of that stuff. Yeah. And she's going to tell her friends. I'm like, when he laughs, I don't even know if he laughing. We heard <laughs> So she was disgruntled, not because the bills were getting paid, because her husband didn't know how to have no life. Man, you got to learn how to have a life. Outside of church. You got to learn how to have a life outside of your job. You got to take them to a picnic every once in a while. I don't care if you don't got nothing planned. Just make up some of your girl. I've been playing 10 weeks ago. What you talking about? I've been having that money saved by... What you talking about? You don't know who you messing with. You know what I'm saying? So y'all, 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 you got to make up stuff on the fly. Yeah. Y'all, y'all don't know what to do, amen. So y'all, y'all, y'all just ask for it and wonder why you ain't getting no pleasure in the middle of life. You got to know how to set the atmosphere where you can have joy and pleasure. Y'all ain't gonna help me talking here. Gonna get somebody to shout, amen. I put that, I put that Jimmy Choo right there in that elbow. That when I hold it, she smell nothing but that that that, that cologne, that that Jimmy Choo, that that that, that wide sale, amen. Then I have joy at the midnight. I'm trying to help y'all. I cup it. You put some on now. I ain't putting nothing on. I'm just, you know, I'm just, yeah. Now, I ain't putting nothing on. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fresh too, boy. Y'all ain't gonna help me talking here. Woo! 
Anybody got any joy? Anybody got any joy? Anybody got any joy? Somebody shout joy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got the joy of the Lord. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I got the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalms 89. Hallelujah. We're going to say in the book of praise, vision of Psalms. Verse 15. Can I get the church to say amen? Kids, if you want good presents, you got to treat mom and daddy real good. All year long. Thank you for this candy bar you gave me. I mean, wow. I'm going to buy him 10 more. The kids are getting real sweet around this time. My nephew been texting me every day. How you doing, uncle? I'm just checking on my uncle. I'm just checking on you. I'm like, man, this boy won't want a gift or something. He said, you got some of them all stuff? I'm like, yeah, I guess I got to give you some. Now, you've been nice. I got no excuse. Y'all got to know how to warm up where God can bless you. I'm not trying to say fake it, but be appreciative over the little stuff and have joy over the little that you have. And God said, I can bless you with a lot more. And some people God can't bless because they never say thank you. Why thank you can't come out of your mouth? Thank somebody for some small, they'll do some so much greater. Bless is the people, hallelujah, that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Thou know, in other words, they shall walk in, 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 in the sound. Hallelujah. They shall walk, know the joyful of the sound. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Now, now countenance means it's, it's like a facial expression. You can tell how people are thinking by the countenance on their face. They don't got to say a word, but the way they look and stand, don't say nothing. It's the countenance on their face. Uh, you can tell if a person with you or they're against you. If they like you or they don't like you. But God said, when you seek my presence, you're going to see the light of my countenance. Woo. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, the light of thy countenance. This time, I want you to seek my face, not what I can give you. And the Lord said, if you seek his face, you will seek his favor, and he'll give you more than what you can ask for. Woo. And they shall know the joyful sound. They shall walk. When you're a real praiser, you know what a joyful sound really is. In other words, you won't walk away from it, but you'll walk to it. When you got real worship on the inside, a real praise, it draws you. But when you really don't know what praise is all about, it repels you. And you talk about praise uh, and you come against worship. But know the joyful sound. Do I got anybody in here that know what a praise is? That know what a joyful sound is? I dare you to open up your mouth and give God praise. My praise is going to attract God to meet every need in my life. My praise is going to attract God to also give me stuff I didn't ask for. Why? Because I didn't sought God and his countenance have showed light and favor on my situation. And some of y'all in dark situations right now, but if you would open up your mouth and give God a praise, the darkness can turn to light. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Verse 16. In thy name. They rejoice all the day. <laughs> Pastor, we can't be here all day if the Lord say we, we're going to be here all day. In thy righteousness, they shall be exalted. In your name, they shall rejoice all day. When you really got an authentic praise, you can't cut it off because it's time for you to clock in. If anybody ever had to take a praise break while they was on their job and they didn't understand why you was irking and jerking, if anybody ever had to go to the bathroom and shout, because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, Kiosha, my soul cried out, I'm sorry you don't understand why God delivered me. He brought me out. I was on my sick bed. You can laugh at my praise all you want to, but my praise don't get my bills paid. My they're trying to come against your worship. 
Hallelujah. But the Bible says all the day long. In other words, son, you don't got to be up and speaking in tongues to still be in God's presence. I don't know about you, but I prophesy over 10 people life uh, or, or 20 people life uh, or over everybody that to give God praise uh, that some of y'all going to be in God's presence all the day long. Uh, all the day long. And when you're in God's presence, uh, someone's favor going to hit you all the day long. Begin to open up your mouth because uh, I feel the all the day long favor that's about to hit your world. Begin to give God praise all the day long. We've been here and we've been dismissing services sometime right on time, but God's presence has kept you. Because truth be told, I found out you can't dismiss God. You, you can't put God on a time limit. Y'all ain't going to hit me preaching here today. Hallelujah. The, the flesh, glory be to God, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I prophesy when you leave about 1230 or 1240 that God's presence be upon you. Oh, that they don't suffer y'all to give God a praise. Y'all ain't fooling me. Some of y'all just give God praise because I said 1240. Amen. You're like, oh man, yeah, that's a decent time, Pastor. <laughs> And in, I love this passage, told you, in the righteousness shall they be exalted, not in your righteousness. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going all over the place. Not in your righteousness because you're not righteous enough. You, I'm not perfect. I'm not good enough for how God has blessed me. I'm not educated enough. Truth be told, I'm not qualified. I got some skeletons that have been in my closet too that I don't want you to know about. But God still favored me because it's in his righteousness. In your righteousness, they shall be exalted. Hallelujah. Why should they be exalted? The word exalted means promoted. <laughs> in other words, uh, your praise uh, is going to promote you. You want a promotion in your life, uh, begin to give God praise. You might not be righteous, but my praise is. I can't get no help in the place. Uh, no, I'm an imperfect, but I got a praise uh, that's near perfection that would still allow, hallelujah, me to be exalted, to get the promotion that God got for me in my life. Uh, it's not because I got the degree. It's not because, uh, hallelujah, they called my name out. It's because of my praise uh, have been so perfected that God has exalted me beyond my enemies. In your righteousness, they shall be exalted. God say, I'm about to promote y'all. I don't even got a title to this. Hallelujah. He didn't give me one, but I want to say this. Praise about to promote you. Praise is going to promote you. God, yeah, yeah, you ain't perfect, but you're doing the best you can. And you see, I got a hallelujah in your throat. Yeah, I know you're messed up, but God's grace is sufficient for you. But don't let your mess up stop you from opening up your mouth and thanking God for what he's bringing you out of right now. I'm not trying to give you a license to sin, but sometimes you got to open up your mouth. God, I know I got issues going on right now, but I still got to praise. People mad at you because they know you don't qualify. But God still gave it to you and not them. <laughs> Why? Because of the joy and your worship and your lifestyle. It ain't because uh, you live the A plus life. <laughs> David did not live an A plus life. He was more like a B minus here. He, he took a man wife. Y'all ain't going to help me talk. He slept with her. He had her husband killed. But God said, David, you are a man after my heart. Because David had a kind of praise that'll make God forget about what he done. Maybe I shouldn't say forget. 
because God don't got amnesia. But God said, I'm not focusing on what you've done, but I'm going to focus on how you lift me up and give me glory. So I have no choice but to allow you to experience promotion in your life. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but 10 people about to receive a supernatural promotion in your life. Well, you just won't be supernatural, but you also will be naturally super. Somebody give God praise. In my city, promotion. God said, I'm about to exalt you. When men exalt you, they can take you down. But when God exalts you, man can't take you down. Men only exalt who they like. Huh. Mm. But God say, I ain't worried about them disliking you. You the chosen one, yeah. Some of y'all the chosen one in your family. It's not because you live the best, huh? but you got the best ways. Yeah. My God, help me preaching here. You tried to come against me, but you didn't know it made me intensify my praise. When your worship is intensified, God said, I'm going to exalt you. I'm going to do the exalting. I'm going to do the promoting. I'm going to do the increasing. I'm going to advertise for you. Woo! God going to put folk. Yeah, hallelujah. They name. Hallelujah. Your name going to be in their mouth. They don't know why they going to be speaking well of you. God just told me to bless you. you. I had a testimony one pastor say, I don't know, but God just told me to bless you. Hallelujah. It ain't a lot, but I don't I want to bless you, but it ain't no strings attached to the blessing. I can't get no help. In, in other words, I'm going to bless you. Glory be to God. And, and I want to do it some more as God enables me. And God got people right now. They're waiting to bless you because God didn't spoke you up while they was hallelujah in their dream. While they was at their job uh, while they was driving their car they're about to speak up your name uh, and they're about to bless you and in your righteousness hallelujah that shall be exalted go to verse 17 for thou art the glory of thy strength and in Oh, I can't, I can't really get into the horn. But in thy favor, our horn shall be exalted. For thou art the glory of thy strength. In other words, uh, I got this particular kind of strength, not because of me, but I got to direct the glory towards God. When God bless you, you can't take the glory for it. I can't get nobody to shout amen. When God bless you in this season, if you, if you continue to take the glory, God will strip it from you. But when God get ready to bless you when he do it, don't give yourself the glory, but direct the glory to God. I got this supernatural strength. Why? So much out because of God's glory. In thy favor, our horn. Woo! Someone say, shall be exalted. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In thy favor, thy, thy, thy horn, in other words, shall be exalted. Glory be to God. And, and what does horn mean? Horn, horn hallelujah, it, it symbolizes God's power. Hallelujah. A, a horn, it, it, it symbolizes God's authority. Hallelujah. He said, in thy horn, thou shalt be exalted. Also, it was in a ram's horn. Hallelujah. That's where the oil was. And God said, I'm going to anoint you past what people think about you because your praise helped promote you to get to the next place in your life. In the favor of your horn, I'm releasing favor over your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. That God is releasing that supernatural favor in my life. If you believe it, I dare you to open up your mouth and give God glory. The horn means glory. Someone shout glory. It means strength. It also means royal authority. It's enabling power. It's dominion. So the Lord's saying, I'm about to give you royal authority. <laughs> Not just little authority, 
but supreme authority. And on today, we're celebrating a royal Christmas. Some of y'all don't know your royalty. And royal people live a certain type of way. Yeah, uh, hallelujah. That's why we put the carpet out for y'all, or the makeshift carpet. Uh, I, I thank God for my wife. She's so creative in her mind. She knows how to do anything when it comes to decorate. But anyway, that's why we put the makeshift carpet up. Why? Because you are a royal people. When you don't understand your value, you let people treat you and do you any kind of way. But when you have royalty status on your life, uh, you ain't going to let nobody do you any kind of way. Begin to open up your mouth and give God praise. If this, go, go to 1 Peter 2 and 9. Can I get somebody to shout amen? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm royalty. Oh, some of y'all don't believe it. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm, I'm royalty. And you ought to know that you're royal. Why? Because Jesus is our king. Oh, he's our king. And, and I'm an heir to the throne, which means he is my father. And if my father is royal, I am royal as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, uh -huh. a, a peculiar people that shall show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's break it down. You are a chosen generation. When I got up, the Lord told me to tell, tell the people that they are special. And the Lord said, you are special. Hallelujah. You're a chosen generation. In other words, I call you out amongst him, not to conform to the world, but to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. A, a royal priesthood. Not just any kind of priesthood, but a royal priesthood. And not just any kind of nation, but a holy nation. How many of you know holiness is still right? I know we try to discredit it, amen, and, and hallelujah, and just say what we want to say, but we can live any kind of way. But a holiness is still right. And a peculiar people, when you see that word peculiar, oftentimes I think of strange. I think of weird. I think of uncanny, hallelujah. But actually, the word really means, in, in its Hebrew or Greek, it means ownership, Hallelujah. In other words, God say, when I call you peculiar, I'm taking ownership of you. Hallelujah. When I call you procurity, when I call you peculiar, I, I'm saying I, uh, hallelujah, I'm taking ownership of you. And God say, I'm trying to own you where you can be adopted into the royal priesthood. Hallelujah. You say, I wasn't born like this. Uh, God said, you don't have to worry about being born like this. Uh, but the adopted child get the same privileges. I can't get no help nobody. Hallelujah. As well as the birth child. Because why? You can carry the same name uh, if you really got adopted right. Uh, and some of y'all say, I wasn't born in this kind of place. Uh, and God say, don't worry about yourself being born. But I have adopted you and I'm going to allow you to have the same privileges uh, like everybody else else half. If you believe it, open up your mouth and give God glory. Show forth the praise. It didn't say hi to praise. Let me read that one more time. He says, show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light. In other words, hallelujah, your praise is supposed to attract somebody to God. So forth the praise, not high to praise. You're not praising for show, but you're praising knowing that for sure you know God brought you out of some stuff. If you know God brought you out of some stuff in your life, uh, I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to give God praise. Uh, God say, show forth the praise. We are saying of worship, but God say, I need you to show forth the praise. 
when you show forth the praise, uh, you let people know I'm not like everybody else. Hallelujah. He brought me out, and I'm going to let everybody know he brought me out. He delivered me and set me free, and I'm going to let everybody know he delivered me and set me free. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time for me to show forth the praise. Go to another scripture. Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah. Glory be to God. Someone shout it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61, verse 3. When you're there, can I get you to shout amen? Isaiah 61, verse 3. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say there's a praise in you. Woo. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, what you showed, that you showed forth that praise, now God going to show forth his favor. If you believe that, give God glory. Isaiah 61, verse 3. Hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. To appoint them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. There is an oil of joy. Can't get no help, nobody. In other words, all you... It's what you anoint someone with. And when you really look up oil, it actually means to massage. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And God says some of y'all have been in a mourning season. A season of being distressed and perplexed. But God says there is an oil. There is an anointing. That now the presence of God is going to massage in you, every area of your life, uh, that you're going to still find a way to give God praise anyway. Your praise don't stop based on what you've been through, but your praise shall continue on. Why? Because there's an oil. In other words, uh, it's something about when I get in God's presence, no matter what I'm going through or what I'm about to face, uh, it's something about an anointing that comes over my life uh, that soothes me and makes me feel like everything's going to be all right. Why? Because there is an oil of joy. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's an oil of joy. And it says this, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. In other words, hallelujah, the enemy wants to uproot you. But your praise have keep you planted. <laughs> hallelujah. The garment of praise and the spirit of heaven is that they might be called trees of righteousness. If you know anything about a tree, a tree cannot be easily moved. And your worship, as you seek God's presence, hallelujah, it'll keep you grounded, glory be to God, and the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to read this scripture one more time, hallelujah. Yeah, hey, don't worry about this right here. This, this is going to be my garment of praise. Look at your name and say, neighbor, when you're going through heaviness, you got to put on something. Now, to appoint them that mourn in Zion, the all of joy, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When I start to looking at this garment of praise, it's not so much as a, as a physical garment, but it's more like a spiritual kind of garment. That although I'm depressed, when I begin to give God praise anyway, because I'm heavy, depression lifts. But see, some of y'all stay heavy because you don't pick up your garment. You get heavier instead of getting lighter. But in order to be delivered and set free, you just can't stay heavy because heaven is going to come your way. Depression is going to come your way. Anxiety is going to come your way. Oppression is going to come your way. But when it comes, you got to get in God's presence. The more that you're in God's presence, then it will begin to lift. For the Bible says the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, and some of y'all picking the wrong garments to wear. And you intensify the heaviness over your life. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's not what you're supposed to wear today. Now look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I like your garment you got on. Say, you got a praise garment on. Your praise garment is your isolation time with God. Your, your, your praise garment is your fasting time with God. Your, your, your praise garment, hallelujah, is your prayer life with God. Your, your praise garment is the time you look, spinning and reading the Bible and understanding what praise and worship and what the things of God is all about. And God say for the spirit of heaviness, glory be to God, you got to put on the garment of praise. So I dare you right now, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Say, I might have came heavy, but I'm going to leave lighter. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I was heavy, but now I know I'm so much lighter. I dare you to open up your mouth and give God praise. Some of y'all been in some heavy situations, but God say, I'm about to alleviate that burden in your life. You've been heavy for five years, sir, but now you're about to be light because of your praise. You was born into a heavy family, but now God is adopting you into a praise family. Yo. You was born in anxiety and depression. You was born into a situation, glory be to God, where you can have no, where it wasn't your fault with what you've been through. But now God said, I'm adopting you into a whole nother family. If you know anything about royalty, they put a garment to indicate that you're royal. It's a robe that God is putting on you now to indicate that you are royal. And now you got this robe on. You better show forth the praise uh, and give God glory. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, for the spirit of heaviness, I got a garment. And my garment is praise. And, and, and my garment is worship. And, and, and my garment is opening up my mouth and, and giving God the glory. You might have been heavy, but I hear God saying right now, your heaviness is leaving. Why? Because you didn't pick up praise. Hallelujah. You're going through a divorce. You better pick up praise. You're going through being laid off. You better pick up the garment of praise. You're going through people scandalizing your name. You better pick up the garment of praise. You're going through people lying on you. You better pick up the garment of praise. <laughs> you, you, you're going through whatever you might be going through right now. You got to pick up the garment of praise. <laughs> Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be sure to put on your garment. But what we do, we'll look at our garment, hallelujah, and think our garment won't do nothing for us. And think our worship won't do anything for us. Hallelujah. But in order for the garment to lift, to glory be to God, you got to put on the garment of praise. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I shouldn't have left my praise at home. So go back in the spirit and get your praise on right now. As you get your praise on, your heaven is going to live. As you give your praise on, your anxiety is going to live. As you get your praise on, the doctor's report won't disturb you. As you get your praise on, your bank account won't disturb you. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And I dare you right now, begin to give God praise. And as you give God worship, I will tap in the fullness of joy. Do anybody got any joy that the world did not give? And the world can't take it away. And I got this joy because I got a garment of praise. I might be going through right now, but I put on the garment. And the garment alleviates me. It lifts me. When I get in God's presence, that's his hiding place. Do anybody know that the presence of God, it can cover you when hell and calamity 
it's meant to hit your house. As the Bible said, your horn shall be exalted. The horn is protection. The horn is a unicorn. The horn means protection. And God is saying, whatever come your way, I got you protected. And a unicorn, we think it's on a horse. But I may throw y'all out for a second. But it's on another animal that the Bible's speaking of. It ain't talking about a horse. It's talking about a rhinoceros. And a rhinoceros is one of the strongest animals that God ever made. That when the enemy try to come up against him, it got a long horn that oppressed the enemy. And God say, there's a joy that's going to protect you. I don't care what come your way. My garment of praise is going to release supernatural protection over my life. Your skin going to be tough. Like you got a rhino skin. I can't get no help nobody. The Bible says it in another division of Psalms that there is a horn as a unicorn. I ain't talking about no magical heart. I'm talking about an animal that's here on earth right now. And there is a protection that's coming over this church. There is a protection that's coming over your life. And God is saying, I'm going to protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger. And later on in the scripture, we ain't going to go to it. I'm going to preach it. The Bible said, I will beat down all of your foes. And some of y'all been trying to get at your enemies. But the Bible said, God will beat down all of your foes. It said it just like that. It said it like it was from the hood. It said it like it was from North Tyler. It said it like it was from North Dallas. It said it like it was from Oakland. It said it like it was from the hood of Longview. But I'm going to beat down all of your foes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my garment of praise it ain't just to lift burden, but it's to protect me because my horn is about to be exalted. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, my praise promoted me. I see promotion over your life. You got a promotion because you got a praise. You got protection because you got a praise. You in God's presence. Well, as long as you're in God's presence, there's a source of protection. Man, protection is all right. But I'd rather have God. I'm not trying to be silly. Man, protection is good. You got to be wise. But God's protection is so much better. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I know I'm protected by God that weapons may form but it will not prosper they gonna try to form against the ministry but they will not work they gonna try to form against your marriage but it's not gonna work why because I put on a garment my garment of praise block the enemy from coming in my mind block the enemy for coming in my marriage block the enemy for coming in my church I got a garment I gotta pick it up and some of y'all will leave your garment right there you depressed bad news somebody died in your family you can't pay your bills telephone bill due electric due rent due bribing Peter to pay Paul and you will sit down and not give God praise but the Bible say for the spirit of heaven is put on the garment of praise is there anybody here that'll put on the garment of praise that'll put on the garment of worship I don't care what you're going to but I got a garment that lift me, lift every burden, lift my mind, 
that a little sickness. And not only that, my praise got me promoted. My praise got me exalted. My praise got me delivered. My praise got me brought out and it offered a source of protection like nobody can do it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am protected by God like a unicorn. And my horn shall be exalted over the horn of the enemy. In other words, I'm saying like this. Uh, the enemy will try to attack because he got a horn too. But when two rams begin to butt heads, one ram that's winning, the other ram submit to the ram who's a lot stronger. And some of y'all been bucking. And it seemed like you've been losing. You forgot one thing. Your garment of praise. This next time you fight the devil, put on praise. So forth the praises who brought you into the light and not a darkness. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got my garment and my garment is worship. I got my garment and my garment is praise. Is there anybody here that'll open up their mouth and give God praise and begin to shout? I got a garment. He is the reason for the season. And in his presence, he gives me gifts. In his presence, I got joy. In his presence, burdens gonna lift. In his presence, sickness gonna lift. Shake a neighbor, rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. And let them know it's gonna be all right. Prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you're going through, it's gonna be all right as long as you don't forget your garment. You can forget your phone, but forget your garment. You can forget your hair piece. Don't forget your garment. You can forget some flats because you shot it in them heels. But don't forget your garment. You can't forget your garment of praise. Shout yeah. Somebody give God praise. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth, give God praise. I tell you right now, begin to open up your mouth. We'll pull that mountain in the middle of that. Give God praise right now. Be the reason for the season. Don't get mad because you don't got a thousand in the bank. You can get everybody no gift. You ought to give God praise. So forth the praise. Come on, open up your mouth. On the count of five. I want us to do as 1 Peter 2 and 9 said. We're going to show forth the praise. Because he called us into the light of out of darkness. So I dare you count of five. Begin to show forth the praise. Five. Four. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on, give him glory. Go ahead and show forth the praise. He brought you out. Hallelujah. As he's bringing you out, he's anointing you with an oil of joy. Hallelujah. There's an oil of joy that's about to hit you. The Holy Ghost is anointing you with joy. Past what you've been through. Past what you're presently going through. Past what you can experience. Somebody give God praise. There is an oil of joy. Come on and lift him up. Is there anybody here? Open 
up your mouth then. Open up your mouth then. Open up your mouth then. Open up your 